Today we're going to show you how to use our new PPM350D Watt meter for testing FTTX and PON networks. Homes, schools, shops, and businesses. While some clients need ultra-high speeds, others have more modest requirements. To give each client the speed they actually need, we have to overlay new wavelengths on existing fibers. This involves deploying standard and next-generation passive optical networks or PONs. That's quite a challenge for field technicians. Whether for deployment, activation or maintenance, each stage of the cycle uses a very different set of tools and techniques. This video gives an overview of the latest PON technology and techniques used for successfully deploying and maintaining these various specific optical fiber networks. Let's start by looking at best practices and proper testing techniques. Activation. What are the tests used for? Tests carried out during the activation phase give us information that creates an identity for the link, or in other words, a birth certificate we can use to later identify the link during maintenance. Once the birth certificate has been created, we know the network is officially ready to use. What tools do I need? A PPM PON Watt Meter Inserting the Expo PPM in the link enables the Optical Link Terminal OLT, and the Optical Network Terminal ONT to simultaneously communicate and measure the optical power intensity for upstream and downstream signals. The PONAWARE software shows which technology is being tested. Let's have a quick look at it from your smart device. Expo's unique power meter, the PPM350D comes with a smart application available for both iOS and Android. This app allows the user to control the unit via Bluetooth and perform all operations and features available on the unit. Features such as selecting test configuration and saving test measurements are all available on the smart app. However, the app goes way beyond and allows import of test configurations, changing measurement names and adding identification and synchronizing measurements. Finally, you can immediately generate and share your test results from the field by creating a PDF report and sending it via email or any cloud services. But what exactly do you need to look for? The test will identify poor connections at the customer's connection point or the optical network terminal and subpar connection cables or defective optical network terminals. To demonstrate our new what meter using live tests, let's visit a client with a fiber connection at home. We're going to create the birth certificate for this line. We'll use the PPM350D to take power measurements for the signal in both directions from the OLT, as well as from the ONT. The clever thing about this device is that it is PON aware. So what does that mean? It means that it can detect and adjust the acceptance threshold parameters in relation to the signal technology on the fiber. Why do we talk about signal technology? Because in the next-gen network, we're going to have technology overlay. The most common network technology right now is GPON, but we'll soon be seeing XGPON, XGSPON, and NGPON too. With this device we can visit client premises, and from one activation to the next we can automatically detect the technology and take the right power measurements. It's so easy to do. We're going to insert the device between the ONT located on the client's premises to activate the service and the OLT, which is at the terminal. At the other end of the line, you'll start by disconnecting the ONT. As you see, the fiber connector is now disconnected from the ONT and now you can connect it to the device on the OLT port here. The next step is to verify the connector. To do that, use an inspection probe with an adapter, which you attach like this to inspect the connector. The probe will show the result very quickly. This is a fail, so we're going to clean the connector and try again. Once the connector is nice and clean, you can connect it to the device at the OLT connection point. Now the connection from the ONT port to the ONT is set up. So why does this device have to be linked up? Because the OLT and ONT must communicate together so the ONT can transmit a return signal. 
The OLT is at the terminal, so it has to communicate with all the different ONTs. While the ONT itself only has to communicate when asked to do so by the OLT. The device has to be inserted so that the ONT can communicate with the OLT. Now you can use the cable to connect the device to the ONT. A quick clean of the connector. It's all good. Connect it to the ONT port. Plug the other connector directly into the ONT. You clean it, it's green. Now you can connect it to the ONT. Now that it's connected, turn the device on and instantly receive the results for upstream and downstream. The device is really easy to use. Once it's turned on, you can choose which service you want to activate and verify. You can access all the different configurations by going to the services menu. This first one for example is for GPON plus XGS PON and RF overlay. In other words, a technology mixing feature GPON, XGS PON and RF overlay. We're going to assume we don't know which technology will be used. So we're going to choose the first one. Select OK, the display comes up automatically. There are a few things to look at here. First of all, we need to read what is in the dark black and to be sure that the device recognizes both the upstream and downstream signal values. GPON is dark black, meaning it has been recognized. XGS PON here has been grayed out. Why is that? Simply because the device did not detect an XGS PON upstream signal, so it can't determine these activation thresholds. And the last thing is that this diode is red. Why? Because for RF video there is no signal coming in, so the device is telling you that the only signal on this connection is the GPON signal. Once the measurement has been taken, save it by pressing this button and move on to your next client or to your next activation. Now we're going to disconnect the ONT from the network. Here, the ONT is in normal operating mode, everything looks good. So we're going to disconnect the fiber inside. It's connected like this. Remove the safety device and disconnect the connector. Let's take a look at what happens when we switch the device on. It's very easy to configure. First we have to choose which service to activate. If there is a technology overlay, we can choose more than one service at the same time. For example, in the first line we have GPON, XGS PON and RF overlay. Once you've chosen the configuration to adjust specific thresholds, click OK. Here you can see the REF button. Use it to create a benchmark that might be for example a bit higher on the fiber to the home network. And then take a countermeasure here directly at the client's location. We mentioned the handshake protocol between the OLT and the ONT a bit earlier. We're going to try and demonstrate that now with a very simple experiment. We're going to connect just the ONT to the device. You can see here that there is no upstream signal detected. Now we're going to connect the OLT. As mentioned earlier, the OLT transmits all the time. We're going to wait until we see a downstream signal here. This confirms what we have for the moment is a GPON signal. Now we're going to connect the ONT and we can see clearly the handshake protocol. So now the ONT can transmit and we have the upstream signal on the device. We just need to save the measurement by clicking the save button and now we can go activate another client. 
Once you've taken the measurements with the PPM350D, if you detect a problem with the network, you can use an OTDR with IOLM technology to locate the problem. For this it is very important to use the live port. The live port is a filtered port operating at a non-communication band wavelength to avoid damaging or interfering with the OLT and damaging the device with the signal coming from the OLT. Once we're connected to the right port, we can launch the IOLM measurement. It is very simple. We're going to connect a launch reel between the device and the ONT cable, then press start. Here we can see the 1625 nanometer progress bar, which is telling you the measurement is still in progress. The IOLM will take multiple measurements, one after the other, and compile all the results in a schematic link so they are easy to read. Note that we're looking at the connector to the ONT. Here, while we're looking at the connector in the home, a different room. And here we can see a failure at around 6 dB which could be outside the home in the terminal input box. And here we have a 1 by 32 splitter with a loss value of around 16 dB which is normal for a 1 to 32 splitter. Then at the end of the line, we can see that the terminal is a 4.4 kilometers from where we are currently taking the measurements. Once the measurement has been taken, you can save it and take corrective measures if you decide to do repairs at this point.